What is going on guys, Jack here and welcome back to another episode of the Portsmouth Career Mode series. This is episode number 91 guys and in today's episode we are going to be entering the January transfer window and we are going to be looking to make a few pre-contract signings and also some permanent signings as well. So let's get into this and let's go into the January transfer window because we're still not there yet. We still have a game here to play against QPR which will be a simmed game. And we really should be getting a win. It's a home match. And let's go and simulate all the way up to that match. So this will be the team we'll be using for the QPR match. And you can have a little look at the team quickly. I won't go through it in detail. Because you can see the players if you want to pause on the video. And take a little look at the team that we do have. So let's simulate this one and see what happens. It's against QPR. So I'm expecting a good result. And they do have some good players in their side. Although they don't have the strongest team. And they do get their strikers sent off. So that surely means... And it doesn't mean that. Okay, so we get a draw from this match. Considering they were down to 10 men for the majority of the match. That really isn't a good result, is it? And to rub salt into the wounds, Milo Savic got injured in that match. And that means he's going to be out for 7 weeks with a broken ankle. And that really does suck because he's a really good defender for us. And it means we're going to have to rely on Sutar a lot more as our backup centre-back. So we are now in the January transfer window, guys, and we've got a lot planned. We It's going to be a very busy window, that's for sure. Got a lot of ideas of players that I'm looking to sign, as well as a lot of Deadwood that I'm looking to shift on as well. First email coming in here from the Portsmouth board, and this is a first. I've never seen an email like this before, so they're a bit concerned with the squad depth and maybe looking to get some attacking talent in this transfer window. I'm looking to do that. We've got Malpay injured. And we've also got Milo Savic recently injured too. So I think we do need to reinforce in the January transfer window. Three players looking to get out in this transfer window being Ryan Gould, Yorfa and Julian Green. And the only ones that I can see leaving permanently are Julian Green and Ryan Gould. Because I, I still think that Matt Yorfa does have a future here at Portsmouth. But before we do that, we will take a little look at the squad report and look at the players that have grown for this month. Tom Heaton has gone up to 79 overall. Binning Williams has gone up to 76 overall. Marquez Prosperi is also looking like a really nice player, actually. Our scout future start is doing very, very well for himself at 19 years old and only, well, only, I say. He's 82 overall at the age of 19. Probably one of the most ridiculous youth players I've ever had in any career mode. We also have players like Jeremy Boga, although not getting too much game time. He has done very, very well in the matches that he has played in. We've also got John Devera as well. Very unhappy. I probably need to loan him out because he isn't getting too much game time. But despite that, he is up to 70 overall at the age of 17. And we also have Dele Ali coming back from injury. And he is now a 75 overall. And I really do hope that he continues to improve in this way because he's a really, really good player. So for this transfer window, we do have 10 million to spend and 24,000 on the wage budget. But when we equally distribute it, it's about 8 million and 76,000 on the wage budget. Could either go in for pre-contract signings mainly, but I do want to be selling some players and bringing in some players for the rest of this season. So I've got a lot of permanent transfer targets that I do have in mind and that I do intend to be trying to go for. I'm going to also make an offer for Tom Dagnall of Bolton. He is a regenerated player, I do believe, although I'm not really too sure what regen he is of. He may actually even be a new gen. Looking at his physical attributes, he could easily be a new gen and not actually a regenerated player. The reason I want to go in for him, he's 76 overall at the age of 19 and he's only got six months remaining on his contract. So I thought if I offer Ryan Gould plus I also offer 1 million, then Bolton may be willing to cash in on their player because he's only got six months on his current deal. Although I think he would be worth a lot more than that, even though he's only got a year left on his contract. Why are all the good players on the teams that I don't even want to sign players from? For goodness sake, look at him. He looks absolutely amazing. Omar Rowe of Southampton. He looks like an ideal player. He's in our budget, but he's a Southampton player. I don't know what you guys would feel about me signing a player from a rival or, or a bitter rival club. That's what I'm really trying to say. Let me know in the comments down below, guys. Would you be okay with me signing someone like Omar Rowe from Southampton? As Julian Green and also Ryan Gould do want to leave the club, then I do actually need a new backup centre attacking midfielder. And I've been looking at this guy for a while. He really does fit the bill, to be honest. And it's Hans Vanneken of Lazio. 
He's a bit of a weird player because although he's not the fastest, he's very, very good technically and also skillfully. And he is six foot four, so very, 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 very tall to be honest for a central attacking midfielder. But he is a player that I do like, and he has got five star weak foot and also three star skill moves. Regardless of that, I will put in an offer of Julian Green, and then I will also offer four million to Lazio. I'm probably going to have to be spending more than that if I'm going to get this guy, and I may even need to request some funds from the board because at the moment it doesn't look like we're going to have enough money to sign the players that we're going in for. I could try and sign this guy on a pre-contract deal, Michi Batshuayi of Marseille. He is a popular option in the comments down below. A lot, of, a lot of you have been saying that I should sign this guy. And do I go in for him on a pre-contract deal or do I approach to buy? Oh my goodness, I've just found Rafa from SC Braga. He's got six months remaining on his contract. Would this guy be a really, really key signing for us? Because we're looking to offload Julian Green and also Rolando Aarons, among other wingers that we do have that aren't really getting too much game time. This guy, however, could be the real deal and could actually be a player that I could actually afford. He's worth 34 million and he probably would blow all of my wage budget out of the water if I were to sign him on a pre-contract deal. I'm going to keep an eye on him, see how things go. And if we can offload a few players, first of all, then I think I will go in for this guy with a pre-contract offer. What I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and offer... Where is he? I can't even find him now. I don't even know where he's gone. Where has he gone? There he is. We're going to offer Ryan Gould and we're also going to go ahead and offer 4 million. I think that's acceptable. And this should be a real, real steal if we can get Andreas Weiman for this amount of money. Well, that's realistic, isn't it? A match here at home against Newcastle, but I don't really feel this match is worth playing, so I'm going to go ahead and set up the team, and then I will go ahead and simulate the match. Like I have said before, I don't really like simulating matches, but as we are in the January transfer window, we've got to get through these matches and these days quickly, because we've still got another 25 days till the end of the transfer window, and this is the side that I have picked for this match against Newcastle. We are currently fourth in the table and a win here would help us kind of, well, increase that gap against the Crystal Palace, I guess you could say. Newcastle, not really too sure how they're doing, but Manjon gets the first goal of the game there in the seventh minute. And hope, hopefully that is a, one goal of many to come in this match because we need a win in this match. We got a draw against QPR and that really wasn't good enough. So we end up picking up a 2-1 result. It's Manjon and Campos in the end getting goals. And it's also Santon getting a goal back there for Newcastle. But it doesn't matter. It's only the clean sheet that's gone there in that match. And we pick up all three points from this match against Newcastle. Chaloba has come to me and said that he wants an increase in his current wages. It really does depend on what he actually wants. If he wants a massive increase in his wages then I may not even be able to afford it. So Chaloba is currently on 40 grand a week and he wants 60 grand a week. That is a lot of money, isn't it? But he is a crucial first team player. He's made 24 appearances already and he's certainly a brick wall in our midfield. So I will go ahead and offer him a new contract and I will go ahead and offer him a one year extension and 60,000 a week. Really looking to sell some players and we haven't actually had a chance to offer yet for any players, but we have had a chance to offer here for Ryan Gould and this will certainly be an interesting one. Stoke City are looking to take the 23-year-old Scotsman for £1.9 million. And although that's a good price for him, it's under his valuation. Not really going to be inclined to accept that. So I'll go ahead and counter off a £2.5 He just looks absolutely amazing. The only problem with this guy is he's got pretty poor stamina and his strength is diabolical. But he makes up for that with his absolutely blistering speed there. He's really, really quick, got good reactions, and he's got some fantastic ball control, dribbling, and also crossing. He's worth 34 million, and I can afford to go in for him. I think I've just got to do it. I think that's all I've got to do. I've just got to offer him a contract, because he'd be a fantastic signing for next season. And at 86 overall, he would be automatically our best player in the starting 11. We've had a lot of transfer offers unacceptable, but we have had one accepted for Senk Tusen. Senk Tosen? Senk Tusen? I don't know how you pronounce that name. That's just terrible pronunciation. And that is certainly something that I'm very good at. Pronouncing names completely wrong. But to be honest for this guy, I still haven't got a full scout report from him. I will offer him a contract and I'm not really too sure if I will go ahead and accept him or not at this moment in time. 
because I still need to know if he's going to be a good player or not. We have another game here against Middlesbrough, guys, and once again, I am going to simulate it. I do apologise, there's not going to be any gameplay in today's episode, but to be honest, this game shouldn't really matter anyway, because Middlesbrough, they're currently sitting in the relegation zone, so it's not really an important match, and certainly one that isn't necessary to play. I do apologise for no gameplay in today's episode, but if we are going to be getting through the transfer window, this is just going to be how we're going to be doing it, and man, John... Starting off that match there by missing a penalty, but Hong Chul manages to get a goal and then Man John gets his goal after missing a penalty earlier on in the match. I'm really surprised he did miss a penalty because he is actually very, very good at taking penalties, but we should get this match sealed off now. Man John gets his second and then another one, this time coming from Felipe Campos. That's two in two for him now. And that is absolutely awesome. Wrapping off a 4-0 result here against Middlesbrough. And that was really expected, to be honest, because they are in the relegation zone. Oh, my God. After that match, we've got some interesting ones here. So, we've seen there that we've had a contract offer accepted, which is absolutely awesome from Nathaniel Chilo. But that's exactly what I want to see. But we've had a pre-contract offer accepted for Rafa as well. This could be an absolutely amazing signing. I'm not going to be making it right now. I'm going to stall it for the time being. But I want you guys to let me know in the comments down below. Do you think this would be a good signing? I'm not going to do it until I get your guys' approval in the comments down below. Because this could be an absolutely game-changing signing. Right guys, so no gameplay in today's episode, and once again I do apologise for that, I've been very busy recently, but also I want to get in as much transfer action as possible, because I know you guys do love the transfer action, and if you have enjoyed this episode, then of course feel free to leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already, as it really does help out my channel guys, and it shows me that you are enjoying this series, and that you do want it to continue. And if you have any transfer suggestions of your own, then of course, feel free to let me know in the comments down below, as I will be interested to see what you guys think about the players that we could go in for. And apart from that, guys, I'm going to have to leave it there, and I'll see you next time for another video. Thanks for watching.